In this video, we will sketch the graph of a rational function. Example, sketch the graph of the following function, f of x equals 3x plus 6 divided by x minus 1. Okay, now, to graph a rational function, we will be needing some information about the graph, okay? So, what are those? We need the following, okay? We need... the x and y intercepts we need the horizontal and vertical asymptotes okay and vertical asymptotes we might also need some additional points but that will depend later on And then after we graph the rational function, we will find the domain and range, okay? This is after we've graphed our function. All right, so this is where I will be writing the information, okay? And this is where I will be solving for those, okay? So the first thing that we want to look at are the intercepts, okay? So let's start with the x-intercept. So if you remember, the x-intercept um, is the part of the graph that intersects the x-axis, okay? So let me draw a graph to remind you of the x and y-intercepts. So that's your, your Cartesian plane. Um, say this is your graph then uh, this point right here is your y-intercept right that is your y-intercept oops sorry let me so this is your y-intercept that's the point that intersects the y-axis and then this will be your x-intercept right here that's the x-intercept that's the point that intersects the x-axis okay now for y-intercept the x coordinate is zero right so x coordinate is zero and then for the x intercept the y coordinate is zero right so these information uh, are important later on okay so now uh, let's find the x intercept uh, first okay now again for the x intercept y is equal to zero the y coordinate is equal to zero and so we can set this equal to zero so we have so to solve for the x intercept so you have 3x plus 6 divided by x minus 1 equals zero okay and then we want to get rid of our denominator x minus 1 so we multiply both sides by x minus 1 we can cancel out x minus 1 so we're left with 3x plus 6 equals that is still 0 and then to solve for x we have 3x equals minus 6 divided by 3 divided by 3 x equals negative 2 and so that will give you your y oh sorry your x intercept okay so x intercept is negative 2 comma 0 again where did, uh, where did zero come from? Zero came from the fact that y is equal to zero for the x-intercept, okay? Now let's solve for the y-intercept, okay? So for the y-intercept, for the y-intercept, uh, the x-coordinate is zero, okay? So we can substitute zero for x, right? So we can have, so f of 0 equals 3 times 0 plus 6 divided by 0 minus 1 this will give us 6 divided by 1 uh, I mean negative 1 equals negative 6 and so that's our y intercept okay so y is negative 6 and so we can write y intercept equals or is 
0, comma, negative 6. 0 came from the fact that for the y-intercept, the x-coordinate is 0. Okay? Now let's move on to our asymptotes. In case if you're not familiar with asymptotes, let me show you what asymptotes look like. So imagine if this is our Cartesian plane. Uh, and then this is your graph right here. Okay, so let's say that's your graph. Um, right there. Then this vertical line that sort of separates or cuts your graph into two equal parts. These are your asymptotes. So, so this is a vertical asymptote. This is your horizontal asymptote. And it's worth noting that your graph will never touch your asymptote, okay? It will get closer and closer to uh, your asymptote, but it will never touch, will never cross your asymptote. So that's um, what asymptote is, okay? So let me erase this one. Um, oh, by the way, before I erase, so if you see, if you notice that, say, for your horizontal asymptote, your graph will approach that asymptote but will never touch it, right? And so this means that this graph will approach, will, will uh, go to infinity, right? So your, your x value goes to infinity, but then your y value will approach a certain number, right? Uh, same goes here. Right? So this graph will go to infinity, but will never touch, touch your asymptote. And so as, as your y goes to infinity, it will never touch this portion right here, which has an x coordinate. Right? So that's the idea behind asymptotes. Okay? In fact, that's how we uh, will um, solve for asymptotes. Okay? All right, let's solve for the horizontal asymptote. For the horizontal asymptote, all we need to remember is the leading terms of our numerator and denominator. So you look, look at the leading terms of your numerator and denominator. Make sure that you properly arranged your, uh, your, your expressions first before doing this step, okay? So take your first terms. That's going to be, uh, that's going to be uh, 3x over x forget about the other terms, and then you simplify it, okay? So you simplify that these x's will cancel out, you're left with three, okay? And then after that, you ask a question, okay? What will happen to this uh, expression as x goes to infinity, okay? So as your value x goes to infinity, what will happen to this expression? Now, this expression happened to be just a number, but this is not always the case. You could have, say, you could have their uh, 3x, you could have their 3 over x, or 3 over x squared. So it depends. So it just happened that for this example, our expression is 3. So what will happen to this expression when x goes to infinity? Now, since this is just a number with no variable at all, then this will not get affected uh, whatever happens to x, right? And so, so... As x goes to infinity, 3 will remain as 3, okay? And so that is your horizontal asymptote, okay? So your horizontal asymptote is y, okay? y equals 3. So that's going to be your horizontal asymptote, okay? So your horizontal asymptote is y equals 3, okay? Again, how do you get that number? You take your leading terms simplify and then take that whatever that expression and ask a question what will happen to that expression as x goes to infinity so in this case since you only have a number then it will not get affected it will not be affected whatever happens to x so that will remain as three so your horizontal asymptote will be um, y equals three now let's look at the vertical asymptote okay so to find the vertical asymptote, uh, it's much easier because you just have to look at the denominator and equate it to zero, okay? So in this case, you have x minus 1 equals 0. 
solve for x, x equals 1, and that's going to be your vertical asymptote, right? Pretty easy. So that's going to be x equals 1, and that's it, right? Again, um, we might need some additional points later on, but it depends on how our graph will look like. Oops, that's quite big, right? So let us, uh, let's try to graph. So our x-intercept is negative 2, 0. So where is negative 2, 0? So negative 2, 0 is here, right? So let's... So let's use another color. So that's your x-intercept. Your y-intercept is 0, negative 6. That's here. Your horizontal asymptote is y equals 3. So y equals 3 is here. That's y equals 3. So let me... That's not so accurate, but never mind. Um, your vertical asymptote is x equals 1. So this is x equals 1. So let's just put some dashed vertical line here. That's going to be your vertical asymptote. And it's easy to see that that for this side here, we know um, how our graph will look like. So you can just approximate how your graph will look like. So let's just put in right there. Okay. Um, we can just do this. So that's the approximate uh, approximation of our graph. Again, you don't need to be very uh, accurate um, with your graph, okay? So that's graph, but then we don't know about this side, right? We don't know where to put the other graph here, okay? So this is where we will be needing some additional points, okay? So we want to know, um, say, if our x is 5, where do we put our y? Okay, so what's our y if, if x is 5, okay? So let's solve that one. So let's plug in 5 for, um, for this function right here. So that's 3 times 5 plus 6 over 5 minus 1. That will give us 15 plus, one, uh, plus 6 is 21 divided by 4. This is about, this is about 5, okay? So that's, I think that's here, right? You can just approximate. Uh, we still need uh, at least one additional point. What happens when x equals 2? Again, we need our point after this asymptote. So all the points here, those are, uh, our, uh, those are the points that we will be considering, okay? So let's say uh, x is 2. Okay, let's try to solve x equals 2. So if x equals 2, you'll get 3 times 2 plus 6 divided by 2 minus 1 that will give us what that will give us 12 over 1 positive 12 okay so positive 12 is right here and now we can connect the dots you can just approximate right so that's going to be um, about this about, okay so that's how uh, the graph looks like. Okay, so we're done. We're done um, uh, sketching a graph of our rational function. Now the next thing that we need to do is to find the domain and range. We can easily find the domain and range of our rational function by just looking at the graph. So we can see that for the x-axis, um, our graph would go to, the, to, to negative infinity, but then it would end end here right it, it it can't go past here because your graph will just go to infinity it will never it will never reach our asymptote so it will never touch this this um this point um one right here so yeah so our domain let me write that here so our domain will be from negative oops sorry let me so from negative infinity, let me write that here. So from negative infinity up to positive one, right? It can't, it can't go past positive one. Positive one, but not including positive one. So that's open, meaning you do not include positive one. And then union, positive one up to infinity because you still have this other graph. 
that starts out from positive 1 to infinity. Again, you do not include 1 because this graph doesn't hit your uh, asymptote, right? That's domain. Then the range would be, the range would be uh, from, well, where do you start? You start from negative infinity, you go to negative infinity, up to this point right here. What is this point? This is positive 3, okay? So your range would be from negative infinity to positive 3, union, positive 3, because you have this, you have this other graph right here that started from pos uh, positive 3 up to positive infinity in the y-axis, okay? Plus positive infinity. And that is it. So that's how you sketch the graph, and that's how you, you determine the domain range based on the graph.